Yo, Mo. Yo, Big Mo. What's up? Uh, men in black today. Look at you. Look at me. Yeah, we're looking good. Did we uh, coordinate this or is this just happened stance? We didn't coordinate. I think that's just how on the same wavelength we are. As podcast hosts, we've really gotten to, you know, get some synergy. It's like one brain. Yeah. <laughs> well, a oh, lot gosh. of people say there's one brain between us. Anyhow. Yeah. <laughs> um, hey, episode 29, Marathon Minute. Um, yeah. And a unique episode at that. It is a unique episode uh, for a few reasons. Yeah. One reason is it's not one guest today. We got two guests. We're interviewing Janelle Grace and Malik Glass about their short film and comic book, Love Conquers All. Um, but not only is it two guests, uh, they actually reached out to us, which is something a little different. We've had a couple of people reach out, but this one is the most notable of those where I was looking through the Marathon Minute Instagram where you know, I spend a lot of time doing our marketing and promoting, which, yeah. you know, you're unfamiliar with. Um, <laughs> we do, we do marketing and promoting? Yeah, shocking. Well, no, you do it as well. You just post a comment on like Facebook with no link or anything. It's just like, hey, it's terrible. everyone, there's an episode. Good luck finding it. <laughs> I know, okay. I know. I, look, there's there's space for improvement. It's okay. It's me. okay. We're all we're all getting better. We're that. Uh, so yeah, I I saw an uh, a DM from Janelle uh, wanting to talk about the project. We ended up getting on a Zoom. We talked for like 45 minutes. We go into detail in the pod about it. But after talking to Janelle, it was it was a no brainer that we wanted to have them on and share their story, but also highlight the short film and comic book because. We're in May right now. It's Mental Health Awareness Month. And the topic of their comic book is about mental health. It's about generational trauma. And I think it's very important, uh, not just now, but just all year round to hear these types of stories. I, I, no, I agree. We, um, we recorded this podcast uh, quite some time ago, right? Maybe a month and a half ago. I want to say maybe two, three months ago. Okay. It was a while. It was a while ago. And uh, they created this film, Love Conquers All. And we are releasing this podcast to uh, coincide with the release of their film, which coincides with the start of Mental Health Care Week. Yes. So we're here to amplify uh, Janelle and Malik and share their stories, but also here to amplify the release of this short film. The comic book is already out for purchase, but the film actually premieres, I think it's in Berkeley at CL Creative Studios. And... I think we have a game that night, so I don't know if I'm going to be able to make it. But if not, I would have been there. It, it should be a really cool event. Janelle was talking about um, how it's going to be very authentic to the Bay. Malik was sharing some cool insights on what to expect. So if you are around in the Bay Area, I highly encourage going to Love Conquers All, the release this Saturday, May 21st. Right. And if not, just tuning in wherever you are in the world, because like we said, and you'll hear the story is very important. Yeah, you know, uh, their their film is an important one. And what was also interesting to talk to them about was not only the substance of their film, but how they came about making it. They're, they're two college students, right? They meet in college in South Dakota. They're athletes. And they decide after graduation, both their first time making a film. Yeah. And they talk about what's it like to become filmmakers and to write and produce and direct and all the other things that go into producing a film. Yeah, they really embody a lot of the same characteristics of people we've had on in the past. You know, they are trailblazers who are overcoming adversity, people who have never made a film who are not only making a film, but making a, a comic book to coincide with it. And not only are they just spearheading it, but they're doing all the roles. They're directing, they're writing, they're casting. Yep. So to hear them talk about that story, uh, is incredible. And we think you'll really enjoy it. I love when uh, people dive into the deep end of the pool, right? Uh, yeah. They, they didn't you know, stick their toe into the filmmaking uh, pool in the shallow end. They just dove into the deep end and that's yeah. really admirable. And I'm anxious to see how their film comes out. Yeah, no, it's really impressive. And we're really excited to see it kind of along the same theme of it being mental health month or mental health awareness month. I do kind of want to talk about our update and maybe maybe a better way of saying it is our lack of update uh, this past week. I remember before our intro, we talked about, should we talk about the game? Should we not talk about the game? Um, because 
uh, well, now I'll be transparent about it. I'm dealing with an injury right now. And prior to last weekend, it wasn't really public knowledge that I was dealing with an injury, but um, nonetheless, I was dealing with an injury. And this is a similar thing that I dealt with at the start of the year. Um, but there's this idea with athletes, or at least myself, my experience with injuries throughout my career is when you're not playing or you're not able to contribute, a lot of times that affects your your value you feel just kind of as a human, which is which is a really unhealthy complex, but because soccer is is your work. Right. And if you're not able to work, a lot of time you lose that sense of fulfillment of being able to feel like you're contributing to something. Yeah. When your job is to to compete uh, physically, to train and to play in games and you can't do either one. What's left for an athlete? Yeah. And the answer is, is a lot, right? But a lot of times a mindset can be that you feel useless or you're unvaluable. And in listening back to this episode and talking about the importance of uh, truth and vulnerability and honesty, you know, so Matt, you're, you're, um, you're telling our audience that you've got an injury that's preventing you from playing and, and training right now. You you've been you've had it for a while now, and you've been reluctant to publicly you know go on record uh, about what's going on with your 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 physical abilities. Yeah, well, I mean, what's it, that about? I mean, it, it's it's uh, <laughs> it's it's kind of tricky because uh, you know I mentioned I was injured at the end of our preseason. I had an adductor strain. Uh, I was out for a few weeks with that. I missed our opening couple of games, which I think I mentioned in the pod. And at the time that was, you know, just getting back from a, a minor injury. And I came back from that. And I think I might've came back honestly a little bit too soon. And a lot of that is, is just me not listening to my body or not being honest with my body. And uh, I, I fought through pain for the last couple of months and I was trying to play, trying to train, and put myself in the best position, but no matter what, I was not 100%. And so I think it's really important, the higher levels you get, you need to be 100% to be of value and to contribute because the difference between one, two, 3% is the difference between winning and losing games, being in the starting 11 or not, or being in the 18, let alone I was out here playing at like 65, 70%. It gives me no chance to be the best version of me. And in turn, the best opportunity to help the team. And so, uh, you know, I recently got some, some scans and it turns out I still have uh, an issue with my adductor. And so now I, I need to take a couple steps back and really attack this rehab process, listen to my body, be honest and get back to hundred percent and not just, you know, 60, 70%, because like I said, that doesn't do anyone any good. Yeah, and and had you not been disclosing it here, I don't know if you watched the beginning of the Roots game last night on TV, but it does have a injury report. Yeah, and you were on the injury report. And yeah, no, I, I did, I did see that. Okay, I so did see that. It's I, out there. Yeah, and it and it's it's interesting, and it kind of just goes to show uh, some of our audience or listeners um, kind of an insight into this iceberg that we've talked about in the past with professional sports, where. A lot of what you guys may see is what's on social media or you watch the game and you see the starting 11 or you see the 18, but there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes. And yeah, this is me, you know, just letting you guys know a little bit of a peek into what's been going on. And I will admit, yeah, it's, it's mentally uh, difficult to be injured, but it's something that I'm working on getting better at doing things like this, of, of talking about it. And, and understanding that although you are, may not be practicing or playing in games, you can still have just as big of an impact, if not bigger, just by your attitude or your presence or your leadership. So these are things that, you know, I'll admit there's times when I haven't been great. There's times when I've been very good at it, but it's important to know that whether you're playing or not, you can still have a, a very big impact, whether good or bad. So you need to make sure that uh, you have the right mindset. And when you when you think of the athletes that we've had on the podcast, Max, and I'm I'm trying to catalog them in my brain real quick, but how how many of them have struggled with injuries uh, of one sort or another throughout their careers? I I don't know if there's I, I doubt there's one that hasn't dealt with 
one to some degree. Correct. Yeah. It's, um, it's how you deal with it. Like most things in life, right? You're throwing a curveball uh, with an injury. How do you deal with it uh, mentally, physically? And it's tough. I, I, these professional athletes, yourself included, uh, I don't envy you for having to having a job that requires you to be a hundred percent physical. And it, the temptation has to be really great to go out there and train and try to compete when you're 90, 80%, 70, you can still play, right? It's not like you can't play. You just can't yeah. play to that level. And it's gotta be tempting <clears throat> to go out there and just give it your all. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it's a tricky situation to navigate, but at the end of the day, you need to do what's best for the team and what's best for the team is you being at your best so that you can contribute. And so I'm working hard to get back to that point, but you know, I just thought it's important. We talk about the importance of sharing your truth and yeah, I think, you know, if there's anyone, any athletes out there dealing with injuries and having that affect their, their mental and not being able to contribute, I'm hoping that this can kind of shed a light on that experience and, you know, let them know that I'm in a similar situation. I'm trying to work through it and I'm trying to get back to, you know, the best version of myself physically and mentally. And I, on that note, let's, let's let Janelle and Malik share about their awesome short film and comic book love conquers all uh, releasing this Saturday, May 21st. Uh, it'll be premiering in Berkeley at CL creative studio tickets are on sale online. Yeah. I hope, I hope you enjoy listening to them as much as I did. I got a real kick out of two young people who launched into something that they had never done before for an important reason. And you'll yeah. hear about the reason why they picked this particular subject. Uh, a lot of good things in this podcast, Max. Yeah. They are two great young filmmakers and we can't wait to watch the film and see what's next. And love conquers all. What a great, what a great tagline, huh? Love that. It does. Yeah. Let's get to I it. I love you, Max. I love, <laughs> I love you too, Dad. That was sweet. Okay. That was sweet. Wow. Well, don't say it enough, right? You hey, say it. Yeah. Right. All right. Let's get to Janelle and Malik. Okay. Marathon Minute, episode 29. Brought to you by Cafe Fini Granola. Yes. The best. The best. That's the best. I'm going to have some right now. In fact, yeah. Me too. This long intro. I'm getting a little, little, little hungry. Okay. Yeah, a little rumbly too. in my tumbly. <laughs> okay. Yo. 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 How's it going? Yo, yo. Finally, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Janelle. So, Max, this is my boy Malik. Uh, he helped me create Love Conquers All, write Love Conquers All. This is my guy. We went to school together. Nice. Uh, I played soccer in college. He played football. So, uh, uh, genius, brilliant, very brilliant young man right here. Yeah. Damn, hyping I, you up. I'm excited to talk to you now. Because <laughs> I always call her a genius, so she got to give it back. Hey, that's it. what that's what a partner's for, you know? If you're going to yeah, co-write yeah. something, co-direct something, you got to gas each other up. So Dang that's God. what we need to do a little more. We kind of bicker, me and him, but maybe that's just because that's a father-son thing. But it is. Every once in a while, you know, I'll gas him up. <laughs> Malik just, is a genius. That's a lot of pressure, Malik. I don't want that kind of pressure. Don't call, ever call me a genius because I can't live up to that. Uh, you, you don't need to worry about that. I like low expectations. Yeah. I can meet those. Yeah. Um, when Janelle reached out to me and we were able to chop it up, it was a no brainer that we wanted to have you guys on and promote what you guys are doing because we think it's incredible. I, I haven't seen the film yet, but I am confident that it'll be very cool. I would love to be at the premiere. Um, mm -hmm. so, you know, if there's any way we can make that happen, you know, we could talk about that after. You got um, VIP, bro. You and right, Pops. Say less. You and Pops. Say less. Now you're talking, Janelle. Say less. Now, but yeah. Red carpet. We're here to gas you up. And I do want to give I do want to give our our listeners or our viewers a little bit of context of kind of how we got here. Um, because this is a little different than some of our usual 
um, episodes where a lot of times I'm having to go reach out to people and find them to be on the podcast. But Janelle actually reached out to me. She, uh, she slid in the, in the marathon minute podcast DMS. And I will say it's my bad. It took me a minute to see it because you know how like DM requests are, you get, you get some weird ones, you know, Uh, maybe I don't know about you, but we've gotten some weird, weird DM requests in the past. And it took me a while to, to see it. But then once I saw it, I checked out the page. I'm like, Oh, this looks like a cool idea. And then me and Janelle set up a zoom and Mm -hmm. we talked, we talked for a minute. We probably talked for what, like Like 30 30 minutes, 40 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. 30, 45 minutes. And I got to know her, got to know a little bit about the, uh, the story about the concept. And yeah, it was a no brainer that we wanted to, to hear more about not just the story, but about you guys, the people that created it, because we think that's, you know, also super important, not just the story, but the people that are creating super cool and impactful things. So yeah, that's a little bit of context of how we got here. Let's talk about, let's talk about you guys. Maybe we could just for our, for our listener, I know my dad did his research and knows you're in St. Paul, Malik, but can we just get, <laughs> learn a little bit more about you guys? Like where you grew up, where you're from, um, whether you were interested in, in film and storytelling at a young age, or when did that kind of come about for each of you guys? Yeah, so pretty much my name is Malik Glass, uh, born and raised in St. Paul, Minnesota. Uh, as far as, you know, my, my aspirations and dreams when it comes to writing, you know, something that I always wanted to do since I say like uh, senior year of high school, you know, freshman year of college, kind of that, that transition, you know, finally become a man, start to figure out, you know, what you feel like your capabilities are and things like that. So, you know, always got good English grades, always, you know. <laughs> kid younger younger kid like you know playing with my action figures and stuff in my room yeah. making up stories and scenarios so you know I kind of combined the two things in that sense um and then you know when I got to college I wasn't really writing as much I wanted to but I wasn't focusing on it it was more so you know football track and then um, like some nonprofit stuff I was doing around uh the community at the time and uh pretty much by the time I finished college it was like uh I was doing pretty much like mental health, uh, residential counseling. I was a residential counselor cool. um, for a social services um, organization. And so um, I got, it was, it was a good bridge for me because I went to college originally to be a psychologist um, and to be a therapist uh, more specifically. And, you know, it didn't really work out. So I kind of shifted to philosophy before I graduated. Um, still being able to straight out of school, be able to work in like the mental health field, work with young kids. You know, I worked with kids 10 to 18 years old at at that facility. Um, And y'all from some some pretty rough backgrounds. Um, They were either in the juvenile system or they were in social services because of some family stuff. Um, You know, so that's what, that's where I got my experience with that, with those kind of things. And then fast forward some years later, um, Janelle hits me up and it's like, Malik, I I got this story idea, man. And um, then, I mean, now we're here with Love Conquers All, so we can go into that part later. Yeah. Um, but I mean, that's pretty much my upbringing, man. Just a Minnesota guy, you know, uh, was an athlete all my life, but I still like to be creative. So, you know, we are where we are now. Were, were you able to do much writing in, in college? Uh, not much. Uh, once I switched my major to philosophy, I started to write some more, for sure. Um, but outside of that, you know, I was, I was a procrastinator when it came to the writing. You know, I used to tell people I'm, I'm going to be a writer, but I wasn't writing in college. <laughs> um, yeah. So, yeah, it wasn't really after. And then what about what kind of Janelle, we'll get to you in a second. Don't worry. But Malik, what kind of what kind of drew you to mental health? What was, you know, mental health and psychology kind of similar fields? What drew you to that to that field? Yeah. So, um, again, going in freshman year of college, not really knowing what I wanted to do. Um, and then I settled in on a psych major because I figured out of all the professions, you know, being a therapist would be down my alley. And actually, my senior year of high school, I had told uh, one of my teachers that that's what I was thinking. She was like, you sure you want to do that? You know, it's kind of rigorous to, to go down that route. You know, after yeah. four years, you got to go and get, uh, you know, your master's and stuff like that. She was like, I think you can do it, but it's going to be rigorous. And so I was like, no, I can do it. I can do it. So that's how I started. And then it turned out that I couldn't do it, <laughs> or at least not at the time. Right. So that's when I, I switched everything up. But 
you know, I've always been the type of person, you know, I feel like I always want to help people. You know, I'm most yeah. fulfilled when I'm able to impact people positively. And, you know, my dad, he worked in, in recreation around the city growing up in Parks and Rec. So he used to always put on, you know, programs for kids and stuff during the summer. I used to be there with him. So him being so active in the community, that rubbed off on me real quick. And then, you know, his mom, my grandma, other family members of ours is real community oriented in that way. So it was easy for me um, to yeah. develop that attitude of, you know, let's help people. Let's see what positive impact you can make. Um, so, yeah, just carried over into college. Nice. That's dope. And then, well, we can we can get into this a little bit. But how did you guys how do you guys know each other? Because you you grew up in St. Paul. Janelle, you grew up in L.A., right? So how, how did you guys meet? Malik, you can go ahead and tell them. Go ahead and tell them, man, how we met. <laughs> so we, we both went to a school called Augustana, and that's in South in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Oh. And so for me, you know, South Dakota is just south of Minnesota, so it's a, you know, a four-hour drive for me. Um, so it was, like, just far enough for me to get away from home, but still not super far. But for Janelle, that's across the country, you know, yeah. halfway across the country. Um, so it was it was my my third year uh, was her first year there. OK, and so she got transferred in that fall and was playing soccer, um, like she said. And that's how we met. And of course, you know, Sioux Falls is not many people that look like us down there. So in you know, yeah. campus, especially <laughs> on campus as well. So, yeah. you know, yeah. we all we all had to stick together, essentially. And so it was pretty easy to connect. Yeah, it was, it was, I knew Malik when I met Malik. A hey, shout out to my guy, Bo who was his roommate. And that was the first person I actually met. Like, you know, like, you know, you see somebody else that's black on campus and you're like, Hey, how's it going, man? Like, you <laughs> yeah. know what I'm saying? When it's not many of you guys, you know? Yeah. So, and my boy, Bo, shout out to him was Malik's roommate. And then I see Malik, I went to their apartment, their dorm, and I see Malik and Malik was studying. And I thought that was the most, we were ready to party. We were like, man, we're yeah. going out, like, let's do this. And Malik was studying. And I was just like, okay, yeah, I'm going to know this guy forever. And we're going to do some work. And he's a genius. And I need yeah. to keep him close. To yeah, yeah, tight. So you, yeah. you knew right away, you're like, okay, this dude, we're out, we're about to be out partying. This dude's studying. I need to, I need to make this connection because somewhere down the line, I'm going to need to work with this guy. Yeah, because I saw, I saw the worth ethnic. That's yeah. hands down. But, I mean, not many kids. I, I'm not just talking about the black kids. I'm talking about the white kids. The white kids was partying too. We was partying together. Yeah. But to see somebody that was, and, and and not the fact that he was just studying, he was a genuine human being. And he was just like very smart, you know, philosophy. You know, to be a philosophy major, you have to think. And I like the fact that he thought and he used his brain. So that's what that's what drew us together. And then eventually, you know, we linked up some years after, you know, he moved to L.A. And I was in L.A. at the time I had I just graduated college and I had moved back to L.A. And Malik was already there doing production and working with our other homie. And uh, it was good to just, you know, be able to link up in that type of space. L.A., you know, everybody's trying to make it big and, yeah. and come up, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. just to be able to link up with somebody you knew and like you went to school with each other was was a great feeling. So I knew we were going to do something great eventually, you know, yeah. um, it was just a matter of time. That's how I yeah. look at it. Yeah, yeah it, was, it was meant to be. How about, well, I, I know a little bit about you, Janelle, but for our audience, for our, yeah. for our listeners, viewers, you played uh, college soccer, we know, you just said, but what about also grew up in LA, but talk a little bit about what your childhood was like in LA, whether you were interested in film or storytelling or what, what were your aspirations as a kid growing up in LA? I mean, I wanted to play sports, you know, I was a, yeah. can I curse on here? Hell yeah. I was a badass motherfucker. Don't get <laughs> like I was a two sport athlete. I can hoop, like I played basketball and I was, I was, I was a, a cold ass motherfucker. I was athletic, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, so that was my dream to play sports. If if yeah. it was basketball or soccer, you know, I wanted to, you know, if it was soccer, I wanted to go overseas and, and, you know, people didn't think, you know, myself didn't believe in the fact that, you know, you have this, you know, pretty much young black girl trying to play soccer. That was a hooper first, you know, I started off yeah. with hoop, you know, people know, knew me for that basketball, but 
I mean, playing soccer, I caught their eyes. You know, I was I was good. You know, yeah. and, um, and I believed in myself, and um, so I wanted to play sports. You know, hands down, I wanted to play sports. But like when it comes to film, drama, and writing, that always like was a reminder. You know, like when I was yeah. in high school, you know, I took the drama. Uh, like, you know, L.A., that's big. You know, you have programs where yeah. you, know, you want kids more involved in the drama courses and, you know, acting and, and, and directing. So, you know, it always was near me. You know, in my church, yeah. I volunteer. Yeah. I was in media ministry. I don't know if you guys ever heard of that. So, you know, being in media ministry kind of like caught my eye towards things and like entertainment and, and videography and, you know, yeah. and catching those moments. So. I mean, Were you in the high school play, Janelle? Any high school play footage we no, can find in, you? In college, the crazy thing is in college, I got uh, invited to play Angel, but I had to turn the role down. Wow. That's crazy. <laughs> Why'd you turn it down? I mean, I was so busy with other things. You know, I was yeah. busy with my studies, of course. And I was, I was about to graduate and I was taking like, man, I was taking like... I was taking like five, like 16 units. I w- I'm not 16 units. I was a full-time student and I was taking extra classes. So yeah. I was busy. I was trying to get done. I was trying to graduate. So I didn't have the time to actually read the script and like, you know, prepare myself for that. Cause when yeah. I look at myself, like I want to prepare for things, especially for that. So, I mean, it's always been around me, you know, um, yeah. playing sport, playing soccer. Um, I got hurt, you know, I tore my ACL which mm. kind of directed me towards other things, you know? Yeah. Um, yep. I'm a firm believer. I'm the firm. I'm a firm believer in the, you know, um, what did they say? They say uh, you're more than an athlete. I'm a firm believer in that. Like LeBron yep. James started that. And I believe yep. that hundred percent that you're more than an athlete. Like, yeah. you know, yes, we're athletic, but uh, we're so much more, you know? So I started getting involved in campus and, and things like that, which uh, gave me the, opportunity to be more creative you yeah know, i love that I, and i love that feeling being able to be more creative and and kind of like uh be a leader yeah no, I, yeah that's i mean i think i think we have a lot of similarities in that sense i mean yeah. i think if you go through all our episodes i've probably said more than an athlete a handful of times because that's very much the category that i see myself in um, right now I'm a, I'm a professional soccer player. That's my job, but yeah. I'm interested in a lot of other things. That was one of the reasons why I started the podcast because I wanted to, to show that I am more than an athlete. And I wanted to amplify the stories of people that are athletes and do other things that are do. And I'm someone who has a lot of other interests. And I wanted to talk to those other people because I didn't want to be seen as just some athlete who simply plays his sport and goes home. You know, like I have other interests with fashion, other interests with photography. I would love to get into some film stuff, which, you know, we can we can talk about a little bit later. But, yeah, I think we have a lot of parallels in that sense. And for an injury to kind of force that to happen is obviously unfortunate, but sometimes it can be a blessing in disguise, you know, pushing you towards some other passion that you may not have leaned into as heavily had it not happened. And now here you are years later, you got a short film about to come out in a few months. And, you know, that's incredible. So I definitely. It's incredible. It's, it's, it's a, how I look at it. It's like, it's a blessing, you know, like now I was like, this is your lane, you know? Yes. I wanted to play sports, you know, I was phenomenal. I was a great athlete, but you know, God was like, this is your lane, you know? Yeah. And I'm going to direct you towards that. And uh, I mean, we're going to make some, we're going to make some shit happen. That's yeah. how I look at it. And I mean, it's a blessing. Like me and Malik, we've been working on Love Conquers All for two years. You know, yeah. we started from nothing. You know, we started from nothing. I thought, you know, yeah. and it's like, I mean, people, people love it and people feel the impact of it and hear the message. That's all that matters to us. Yeah. Yeah. So you returned to L.A. or SoCal after college. Any any thoughts, that, any doubt that you would return home? after school were there any thoughts of other parts of the country or it's always I mean, so I, I, I love oakland don't get me wrong like i love it 
is is, is you better. We're, we're we're sitting in Oakland See, right don't now. Don't just say that because we're here. Don't be dissing no, no, Oakland no, no, on no, us. No, 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 I'm dead ass. It's it's a vibe. Yeah. You know, it's a lot of potential, especially particularly to to film and art. And, um, yeah. you know, it's, it's it's a great vibe that I feel here. So I'm staying put. I'm staying put for a little bit. Malik, I don't know. I mean, I've been trying to get him to move out here. I've been trying to get his ass to move out here. So, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Well, Janelle, you're in uh, where are you right now? You're in Vallejo, right? Or uh, no, 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 no. Um, are you in Oakland? I mean, I'm in Carson? my office, actually. In Oakland, I mean oh. in Concord, but I okay. was in Oakland earlier. Yeah, yeah you're. Of, uh, yeah, a couple hours ago. Close yeah. enough. Okay, let's talk. Let's start getting a little bit into this project. You talked about how you guys linked up in LA following college. Had the idea already been formed then that you wanted to to write this story, or when did it come about? Where it's like, because you guys both wrote it and directed it, correct? Yeah. So when did it come about? Where it's like, hey. Let's let's really I have this idea or we both have this idea. Let's connect and start writing and really start making this thing happen. When did that kind of happen? That kind of happened like uh, I would say like 2019, Malik. Yep, it was October 2019. Yeah, 2019. And uh, at the time I was already up here, like I was up north. You know, I had a buddy that was like, man, like. You know, you come up here, you build your experience. You know, I just had graduated college, so it was kind of hard for me to find a job, especially in L.A. So he was like, man, you come up here, you build your experience. You know, you build, you stack your, you stack your money, you stack your bread, and then eventually move back. So that was the idea, to move back to L.A. You know, but I was up here, and I was like, you know, I was seeing the potential, and I was just seeing, I was like, man, like, just focusing on myself and just grinding, you know, and then, you know, my sister had passed away, you know, so that kind of like was like the trigger, you know, that I was like, man, I I have to find some way that is a healthy way of me coping with this. You know, when you lose a sibling, especially a younger one, it's like it's tough, yeah. you know, and it, it makes you look at yourself It makes you reevaluate yourself. So writing was a part of my healing. It was mm. a part of my, you know, grieving process to be able to write and kind of like tell a story. And at the time I was working with kids, you know, so I was seeing the kids story and the, the trauma they was going through and the fucked up shit they was dealing with at, at a young age. So it was kind of like something I, you know, looked at as, you know, like I have to do this, you know, I have yeah. to write, I have to be able to tell a story that will be able to connect, not just the children, but people. You know, human beings, yeah. you know, especially human beings that, you know, grew up in a foster care system or grew up in a group home or grew up just dealing with mental health or seeing their parents deal with mental health. Because I, I figure like ahead of time prior to COVID, I was like, man, mental health is big. Yeah. And it's and it's multi-generational. You know, it's not just the individual that's dealing with it. It was passed on from their parents. It was passed on from their grandparents, you know, dealing with, you know, mental health and, and learning how to cope with that. So, I mean, that kind of inspired me working with young people and working with kids, at-risk kids, um, inspired it on top of my sister passing away, you know, and uh, I started to look at myself. I started to look at my mom, you know, you start to look at your grandparents, like, where do they come from? And my family, yeah. they're from the South. You know, we're part of that great migration that you hear about from folks, black folks from the South moving to the West and to the North, you know, and I had to look at their history and where they came from. You know, my people come from the country and, um, you know, they didn't have the time to talk about how you feel. <laughs> yeah, that's no. just 100 yeah. percent. You don't have the top. You don't have the time. You're trying to focus on surviving and, you know, taking care of your kids and taking care of your family. And, you know, you don't have the time to focus on how you feel, you know, so that kind of inspired, you know, Love Conference all a little bit more tackling that multi-generational trauma. But, yeah. uh, you know, Malik, I knew Malik was always a writer. So I, I knew it was destined when I seen him studying on that couch. You know, and what was it like 2011? I know it was like 2010, 2010, uh, it was like uh, 2012. Yeah, so we, like, like I, you know, we was like 20 years old. I'm, I'm 29 right now. Malik's 
28, 29? 28. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, it's been some years. And I, I, told, I came to Malik and I was like, man, like, we're going to do this. You know, we're going we gonna to make a story that's impactful and it's, it's going to, you know, impact many different demographics, not just, you know, black folks, not just brown folks, but white folks. And just, and just the fact that it's talking about and it's angling at men, you know, yeah. it's, that was impactful, you know, because, you know, I worked with young boys, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't really work. I worked with young girls, but not, I worked majority with young boys and just to see what they were dealing with, you know the anxiety and the, you know, the pressure that they had to become men to survive. So that yeah. kind of. Well, Janelle, so, so uh, your, your sister passes away and I'm sorry about that. And you're working in yeah. the mental health field and you've got a story to tell it and you want to tell it. Yeah. You can't, you contact Malik yeah. and you say, Malik, yeah. let's collaborate on yeah. a film. Yeah. Now, you guys, we're not filmmakers, right? Yeah, we weren't filmmakers. I mean, I got my BA in history with a minor in communication. So I was, I've, I've always been a people person, you know, yeah. good at yeah. talking to folks. I can tell. I can tell. <laughs> so how did Malik, how did Malik respond when you, when, you know, he answers the phone and did you go, Malik, do you, what, like Janelle? Yeah. What's going on? Court at the time, I was hooping. <laughs> I was hooping and it was in between games. I saw she had called me. I hit her back. Yeah. You, uh, yeah, I just broke it down. She's like, Lee, I got this idea. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was like, yeah, let's do it. She, she pitched it all to me. And like she yeah. said, she knew me back from the college days that I wanted to write. Um, yeah. And yeah, that's pretty much how, how it came together. Then it was just like, let's do it. And like, So we started like probably a week or two later and then we never stopped. Yeah. Never stopped. No, yeah. that's, and, and then that, we got in- that's great. Oh, and then eventually, I mean, you know, my roommate, my roommate, shout out to him, Will, uh, is a wine guy. And I was I was able to meet another, a, a guy that owned a wine company called Luna in Napa. And come to find out, homie owned, you know, a, a streaming company called Ficto. He was a partial okay. owner of a streaming company called Ficto out here that was up going. You know, I, I, I reached out to him and told him, like, man, what I'm trying to do. You know, this is like a year it's like, yeah, a year after we finished it, you know, and I reached out to him and I'm like, man, I got this great, I, this script, I got a great feeling about that me and my, me and my great friend wrote, and I think you will like it. And, you know, he already likes me as an individual, you know, he's always thought I was very professional and just like a, a great spirit, you know? Mm-hmm. So he sat down and talked to me and he was like, okay, you know, I have a, a great friend that I would love to connect you with, which is Gary Goldman. Uh, I don't know if you heard of Gary Goldman. Uh, uh-uh. he, did, he did the Entourage, oh. you know, HBO. Um, and okay. then Gary oh, Goldman. That was mildly successful. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Gary Goldman knew a guy named Jeremy, Jeremy Tolliver. What, what is it? Oliver Tolliver Malik? Uh, I'm not sure. I always called him Jeremy. <laughs> yeah, Jeremy. We always called him Jeremy. And then um, he's worked on The Wood. If you guys seen The Wood in Inglewood, he's worked on uh, Friday, Friday yep. After the Next, you know, some big films, you know, yeah. Hollywood guys, you know. Yeah. And Jeremy called me, and, you know, the first thing he said to me was like, who's your who's your favorite director? And why do you want to do this? Like, you know, and it was crazy. He called me at like at six o'clock in the morning. I'm like just waking up, getting ready for work. And, and, and him calling me was like impactful. It was yeah. like, you know, like some somebody's paying attention, you know, yeah. they hear what we're saying and their feet, they feel our energy and they feel our vibration. So let's continue to do this. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, Jeremy kind of consulted us and, you know, revamped our script a little bit, formatted it a little bit. And he, he thought it was great. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, you know? While you're talking about your script, um, well, and we're going to talk about the substance, the content of love conquers all but in terms of process like how do you go about writing a script particularly when you're collaborating together i mean what what's that look like when you you say okay let's we've got this idea i want to do a film yeah let's collaborate yeah what happens next what's the process like of writing film it started in 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 my opinion I, i speak on behalf of me it started in my mind you know like 
it mm-hmm. how I tell people it said I, I say it starts in the back of your mind it moves to the front and then you put it on paper you know yeah. and so like I saw the vision you know I saw what I wanted Kennedy to look like I saw what I wanted Rose to look like you know and I saw what I wanted to pinpoint key things that I wanted to pinpoint and then I got with me Malik who was like just this philosophy guy that just elaborated things, made words yeah. sound great. And um, and it was it was easy for us to work and it was easy for us to just, you know, get it out, you know, I would say so. Yeah. And then the the process, yeah, because it all started with Janelle, all credit to Janelle, her idea, everything. And once we started writing, we would get on uh, Zoom pretty much and. Yeah. So you know the time how how it lined up October 2019 when we started and then the lockdowns for COVID pretty much happened a few months later you know yeah. early 2020 so mm-hmm. we had actually wrote the whole script by like the new year by the top yeah. of 2020 and and mm-hmm. Janelle had casted pretty much the whole the whole cast <laughs> it was like she was out Damn. super producer yeah, yeah. Um, Not- and so yeah. COVID shut everything down so it was was time to you know actually get the script the most part and that's also when we came up um with the idea of doing the, the comic book it, that was Janelle's idea as well but yeah. that was the timing of it so we started we would just be on zoom sessions maybe like once sometimes twice a week you know yeah. just writing just pure writing she'll tell me a thought I'll write it out to her a thought she'll write it you know it was it was good too because we weren't afraid to tell each other no nah, I'm not feeling that idea <laughs> you know like yeah. we were good mm-hmm. friends first that's like, important that was really important and for making it a quicker process too and more efficient. Um, so yeah, we got, we banged that out in a few months and then COVID hit and then we started our our illustrator, Eli, shout out to Eli. Um, we had originally hired him to do the storyboard for us to illustrate the storyboard. Yeah. And uh, so once COVID hit, things got shut down, everything got pushed back. We was like, man, can Eli just do a comic for us? Like, you know, cause he does yeah. manga by trade. He's a manga artist by trade, and he's an art teacher as well, amongst other things. So, yeah, once we told him, he was he was more than happy. And so we banged out the comic, and we got the second one coming in the future. But, yeah, that's like the general writing process. We would just once or twice a week yeah. be on Zoom and just bang it out. Yeah. Okay. That's, I mean, that's, that's yeah. really impressive. I, I kind of just want to jump in. And, I mean, you said neither of you had written a film before directed a film before produced cast there's a lot that goes into creating a film i'm sure as you guys have have found out throughout this process at, at any point were you guys like intimidated or like this is in over your head felt like oh this is just too much because you said janelle had already cast art like right when you guys finished writing like like that's a whole like people's jobs are to be casting directors and you guys are writing you're producing, you're casting. Um, like at any point, did you feel overwhelmed or did you feel like any imposter syndrome or how did you navigate this space? I mean, I just feel like I wasn't intimidated. I was like, man, I'm motherfucking Janelle Grace. Like by the end of the day, like I that's the athlete in you, you know, when you yeah. play sports from a young age, you build that confidence, you know, you know, you know who you are. You know, I knew who I was and I knew that, you know, I was talented, you know, and I knew Malik was talented, you know. So, like, when you have a vision, you stick to that vision. You know, you grind it out despite what people say, despite how people might feel. You know, I had no, you know, no disrespect to them. I had two other actors to play the main role drop out. I don't know if they believed in it or they didn't believe in me or they didn't believe in Malik, you know, and and yeah. And how I look at it is like, you know, I had to stick to what I believed in. You know, I believed in Love Conquers All. I believed that Love Conquers All was special. And it was, you know, it was going to impact a lot of people. You know, it was bigger than me. That's how I look at it. It was bigger than me. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when you when you're yeah, also, casting. Oh, go ahead, Malik. Sorry. Oh, no, no problem. I was just going to say that when like knowing that this is also just the first project right so we got aspirations to do more stuff so it's kind of like yeah. you got to get the first one out the way if you even want any hope or chance of continuing yeah. this as a career <laughs> yep yep well that's 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 interesting because i want to hear about your aspiration what you know the what next 
down the road. We're we're not at that point yet uh, in our our conversation with you. But in terms of casting, uh, how how do you go about finding actors? Do you do you have them? You know, I guess by Zoom if it, if it's COVID, and do you have a readings, and do you you know do what you classically think of casting actors and actresses in terms of uh, you know um, what do they call those casting rehearsal calls and stuff. casting yeah. call casting yeah. Calls. I mean, how we did it was we slid in, slid in folks DM. Like I was looking at just how like they got on the podcast. <laughs> okay, so it works. Like, I, I mean, it works. It works. And I was looking like I was like, okay, I want to shoot a film in Northern California. You know, I want to pinpoint. You know, I want to show love to Northern California as a whole. You know, what what Sacramento. inspired that? What inspired that? Uh, going to school here. You know, prior prior to me going to school or Malik went to school, you know, I went to junior college out here in Sacramento okay. and I played sports and I got a scholarship, which led me to move into where Malik's at or where Malik was. So, yeah. So, but I mean, Northern California, I've always thought was beautiful and I've always thought had a lot of potential, you know? And uh, so casting, you know, I, I just, I looked at Northern California actors you know, Bay Area actors, Oakland actors at that, at fact. And, you know, I, I, I came across a lot of, you know, great actors in general, you know, and then, you know, I saw their work previous to me, you know, and I, I sent it, I reached out to them. I was like, hey, this is what I'm trying to do. Sent them the script. They loved the script and was like, okay, we want to be a part of this. Yeah. So eventually we started having uh, script readings, you know, uh, of course, we practice and practice and practice and practice. We had script readings and, uh, um, you know, like it, the, the process grew as we grew. That's how right. I would say. Yeah. Yeah. What about I mean, I'm sure with any film, fundraising is a big thing. You know, making a film is is not cheap. Yeah. I'm sure yeah. you you found out <laughs> what was uh what was that process like funding it? Like, did you guys fund it yourself? Did you guys use outside investment? How is the, how is that process like for you? Malik, you take this one. You take this one on the funding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, funding, uh, all self-funded, all self-funded. Hell yeah. And so, um, you know, on a short side story, uh, my, my good friend, Logan Ferrozo, he's out in LA, you know, still doing production stuff with, with his company, co-creator, him and Shane Taylor. Um, so they, they do a lot of good work. And that's why I was out in Cali um, back in 2017. I was out there for like 10 months living out there before I moved back to Minnesota and started programming. because I'm, I'm a software engineer right now. But that was like like the funding part was like the first thing everybody was worrying us about. Like Logan, too, is like, yo, man, this can get expensive. Yo, you going to be ready for this? Yeah. It's like, yeah. And so Logan. He even you know offered to, to help us to make it a little cheaper for us, you know, kind of get like the buddy deal. Um, but he ended up getting a big gig, you know, out of the country. And so that kind of fell apart. So we kind of had to scramble. And then that's how we uh, came across Hidden Temple. Um, they were a production company coming out of Sacramento. So okay. big shout out to Pedro and all the folks out at Hidden Temple and all the people that help him out up there. Um, but yeah, just Janelle doing her super producer thing, reaching out to people. And then so we got in contact with Hidden Temple uh, and just over time uh, formed a relationship. I think originally they brought you on yeah. their podcast, right? Yeah, you know? they had me on their podcast. And right. So I say all that to say uh, we formed a good enough relationship to where, you know, they didn't give us like you no know, super big discount. But when it came to payments, you know, they were lenient. You know what I'm saying? We got yeah. stat things real nice, but that was all off the strength of the relationship. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. they, they felt that we were genuine people. We felt that they were genuine people. So, you know, mm -hmm. the power of relationships, man, is crazy. Um, so, yeah. so really, it's all self-funded, man. Me and Janelle, we've just been funding it. But again, we've been doing this, you know, since 2020. So everything's been spaced out. Yeah. And um, once we finally, originally, another story on Hidden Temple is the film itself. It, it's a it's a traditional film, but we're intertwining it with interviews that we did. And we did interviews okay. asking people um, just about their own experiences with mental health. And so we got a lot of a lot of good people in those interviews. So we originally hired Hidden Temple to shoot those interviews for us. And then we was going to have my friend Logan shoot the film. And so okay. yeah. we got the interview shot. And then that's when Logan got that job out the country. And then so we hit up Hidden Temple again, like, yo, y'all want to do the film? <laughs> Let's run it back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, y'all want to kill this shit real quick? And, and it was, it was, it so was they were down. They were down. Yeah, it was down. They was down. And 
You know, we created a schedule, we created a payment plan, and, you know, we executed that. Me and Malik, you, you know, we both have nine to fives. You know, Malik is a go ahead, software me. engineer. He's yeah. writing. Uh, he's writing. Look, uh, Pops, no, Pops been doing his research. No, he knows. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He knows. Yeah. You each had nine to fives and you're shooting a film yeah. and you guys are co-directing this. Yeah. That's that's wild. I mean, that's that's very yeah. wild. Wow. How like how how is that possible? How is that process like? Were you on set? Were you like how much how much? uh I mean, I'm sure you had a ton of influence on like what type of shots you wanted, um, how, yeah. you know, the whole f- cinematic flow that you wanted um, to have the piece feel like. Yeah. What was that like? Were you on set every day? Was it kind of remote? Were you communicating? Were, were you in California, Malik? How did this all go down? Uh, I was yeah. on set majority of the time, but Malik came out here uh, Malik, tell him when you came out here. I don't want to tell him because I don't want to spoil the secret of why you came out here, but go ahead, tell him. Ooh, a secret. <laughs> a secret re- revealed on Marathon Minute. This is exciting. Malik? I think she's gassing, but <laughs> I would, it was uh, it was the whole schedule because, like, again, once we had to reschedule things and get hit in tempo to actually shoot the film, it pushed yeah. some dates back, and that's right. that's actually the reason why we lost some actors as well. Yeah. Um, so... You know, we had to scramble for new actors. Janelle found some more actors, and uh, it was pretty much like we had our schedule set up, and we shot the whole film this past summer, just 2021. So okay. we started in like a, a June, and then we took a couple couple of weeks break, and then we picked back up in July, and that's mm-hmm. when I was out there. I was out there for about a week and a half in July. I was out there for a couple scenes, and then uh, we they picked back up again in not in August and finished in August. So, you know, three, three different, you know, kind of um, time blocks and yeah, right. we just got it done. Yeah. Well, where's the big secret? I, I, I'm, I'm, I, I can't I'm, tell you guys, but when you see the film, you'll know what the secret is. Okay. That is oh, a, I have a teaser. Feel, I have a feeling, yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to spoil it, but I have a feeling I might know what it, what it is. Yeah. yeah. You might know. Um, I have a guess too, <laughs> but I won't guess on air. So okay. did it, did you you wrapped it up in by the summer of 2021 and yeah, put it in the can so yeah to speak. yeah 2021 yeah yeah we were done and uh it was ready to go you know now we're in the process of editing and and just getting everything in order you know out in adding sound adding music and uh yeah. it's beautiful man it's beautiful i'm very pleased and very happy with what we have I mean, especially yeah. what working with what, what we had, you know, you know, the actors did well, you know, Chris, a uh, young guy coming out of Sacramento, you know, he wasn't an actor, but you no, know, me and his brother went to college together and I uh, went to school together and his brothers in the NFL, Devontae Bond. I don't know if you guys heard of him, but uh, yeah. Who does he and, play uh, for? Uh, he plays for the Cowboys now, okay. but he was playing for the Bucks. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he, you know, introduced me to his brother and we passed ways. And I was like, man, you know, you got the look of Kennedy. You look just like him. So, yeah, let's go ahead and get this get this ball rolling. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. What's been this post-production process like? Because I know damn near just as much work gets done after you're done shooting than before. So what what has it been like to edit it? Because you had I'm sure you had this vision of how it would look prior and then you filmed all this stuff and then you got to piece it all together after and that's a lot of work so what what has this editing process been like uh do you have like a um, do you have an outside editor you're using how are you navigating the music like i'm sure that there's a whole lot of stuff that's i'm sure you're learning on the fly but what is a what has that process been like once you've got the actual content because people think you're done but it's like no nah, you're just getting started Oh, yeah, it's it's beautiful. I mean, we're still with Hitting Temples. You know, shout out to my guy, Pedro, like Malik was saying. And uh, we're still rocking with them. And we go to their studio. Like, I'm going to be at their studio this Wednesday in Sacramento. They got a nice studio. And uh, we edit and we just, like, I'm, like, throwing. It's like making It's like making music, you know? It's like pieces. I want the saxophone. Let's add that. Like, yeah. it's like, I want these effects. Let's add that. You know, let's make it sound like this. And it's beautiful for me, you know, because I'm just like, damn, this shit started in my mind. 
Yeah. Like I'm this shit started in my brain and it's like to be able to see it like have a visual it's like it's it's super impactful and it's a beautiful process and it's just like you know adding the music i mean of course you know we can't have these big artists but we're giving love to local artists you know that's, we're yeah that's love dope. To all artists which is dope and um you know i'm super excited for you guys to see it it's it's super beautiful and how we did it is I'm, yeah. I'm very pleased with what we have it, it must be uh, a thrill uh to see an idea, a concept, a uh, yeah. beginning of a writing process, a collaboration, all the hard work you put in, sort yeah. of starting to come together, right? To be a finished product. Maybe you're not quite there, but it must be thrilling to see kind of, uh, you know, your your baby grow up uh, and, and become whole. And you're, I guess you're probably relatively close to that point, huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're almost done, you know. Uh, you know, we got a trailer coming out. What I'm thinking, releasing sometimes in March. You know, Let's because uh, I mean, the premiere is in May, which you know, you know, we're gonna have a big ass premiere, which we're gonna have artists, we're gonna have, you know, a panel, we're gonna have Q and A. You know, we're gonna make this shit cool. Like we're gonna make this shit hip hop. We we have been talking a lot about Love Conquers All, yeah. but we have not told our audience, and it's sort of they're probably saying, "Well, what is Love Conquers? What's it about? What's the story? And how comfortable are you talking about kind of the outlines of of the film?" Yeah, well, we can we can time the release of this so it's like maybe a week before or two weeks before. Um, yeah. So if you want to give people like a sneak peek, but not, you know, too much of a giveaway. Like what, yeah. What should they, what should yeah. they expect? Well, you want to take this one? Yeah, for sure. And I'll, I'll kind of talk about the comic book as well in the same breath. So Love Conquers All in general, like uh, Janelle was saying earlier, it's about a story of a young man who has to deal with his, his past traumas, not only his past traumas, but his current traumas. Uh, when the story first begins, his sister passes away. And so, you know, with the story that Janelle shared earlier, that was part of the inspiration as well. And we wanted to intertwine that in. And so that's how the story begins. You see the main character, Kennedy, kind of in this sunken state because of that. And then um, really wanted to highlight in this story the power of relationships and the way in which the people around you can help you, you know, get through something and that you're not always, you know, by yourself in it. So that was a big theme is relationships and the way they affect your mental health. So progress through the story you see Kennedy interacting with different people in his life you know his his um, girlfriend first and foremost um, Rose. His, yep Rose's girlfriend Rose nice pops nice <laughs> uh, his, uh, his mentor his best friend um, you know his aunt the therapist uh, you see it all and you know at first he's reluctant to see a therapist you know he doesn't really know how to deal with his trauma all he's used to just kind of bottling it in kind of like right. we spoke with a lot of black people you know people in general you know especially like men men of all races are kind of raised to be tough and you know not say stuff and not cry and stuff like that not be too sensitive and all those things so you know it's just kind of exploring that having that dialogue saying some of those stereotypical things we say then seeing how somebody who cares about you might combat that or how hard they might mm -hmm. go to to really get you in a better state. Um, so that's pretty much what the story is about. And so the comic book, it's a its a direct reflection of the film, uh, but the comic book, we're gonna come out with another volume um, later, oh. later this year, next year. Yeah. And so that's gonna go a little bit more into Kennedy's story. Um, you know, if we can film it, that would be <laughs> nice, but being how expensive it is, like we yeah. don't know if we're able to film the second part, but we'll definitely um, in the graphic novel form come out with that extended dialogue and it's going to be going even deeper into, you know, how Kennedy, you know, is he successful? You know, where we left off last time, is he, you know, picking up? Is he heeding yeah. the words of the people who care about him, things like that? Um, you know, is he getting better? You know, because we know with mental health, it's the type of thing where you can be good one minute and then two minute, not necessarily, or, you know, you can work hard to get through a certain thing and then something else hits you out of nowhere. So it's kind of like, how, how do you respond to those things? Uh, so that's like the general gist. Yeah. No, I mean, mental health is like physical health. You don't you don't go to the gym once and expect to be ripped up, you know? Yeah. I mean, maybe you do, dad, but not me <laughs> and not everyone else. But no, I think I think what you what you guys are doing is so important and the message that you're sending and spreading is so important because it's it's honestly very similar to what we do a little bit on the show is 
is we want to show the human side of the people that we're talking about. You know, we don't want to just ask basic questions. What's your favorite color? Where are you from? We want to talk about what's in your head, what's in your heart and to show that we're all much more similar than we think. And, you know, you talk about men not wanting to speak about their feelings and speak about mental health, not talk to a therapist. That's a very common subject that we like to speak about. I'm someone who has had my ups and downs with mental health. And I started speaking with a therapist this past year and it's been, it's been great. We talk about how our generations are very different in that my dad, when he grew up, nobody talked about any of that. And so the fact that you guys are creating not just a film, but also a comic book, different mediums that can be consumed that are sending this message and showing that it's okay yeah. not just for anyone, but for men and for black men, especially to talk about mental health. You know, mm-hmm. I think the impact that you guys are making is, is incredible. And my hat, I tip my hat to you guys. Cause you know, that's you, you literally created this out of an idea in your head. And now you have a film and a comic book that is going to make an impact. Mm-hmm. And, you know, that really is, is awesome. And that's, you know, one of the reasons why we wanted to have you on the show, because now, now you have a podcast out that's yeah. talking about what you're doing. And, you know, the more that we can spread this message that keeping in your emotions, keeping in your thoughts is not going to be the best way to overcome whatever trauma or experience you're going through, then, you know, we're going to try and amplify that message as much as possible. So yeah, I, I credit you guys to that. And I'm, I'm really excited for, for this yeah. premiere. <laughs> the premiere is going to be amazing and i appreciate your kind words man like we've been working hard like we ain't been slacking we ain't been you know this is like i said earlier you know the message is bigger than us you know we you know we've seen it you know i've seen it you know i've seen it within my peers i've seen it within my family and i was like why not create a conversation let's have yeah. a conversation about it you know like that's important to me yeah. All right. It might be a good time to mention too, like we, you asked us about post-production and putting the premiere together. I don't know if it's traditionally part of post-production, but like we're considering it as because like we're, it's all been blending together for us. So now trying yeah. to put this uh, premiere event together and we wanted to make sure that it wasn't just a, a movie event. You know, we wanted to actually make it a community oriented type thing. Yeah. And, you know, bring young people, bring people of all ages out, really, all all aces. Sorry. Why are you looking at me, Janelle? I mean, (laughs) Malik, why were you looking at me when you said people of all ages? You look right at me. You know, got got to include Um, everybody. I'm just just busting you, Malik. You're cool. We're good. We're good. Talking to all these uh, health professionals, because like Janelle said, we're going to have a panel. That's going to be a a Q&A as well. And so we have we're just bringing in different health professionals, people who work in the field. And so we're talking about like CEOs. We're talking about you know doctors, just people who, who's who been doing this. Right. They got the credentials right. on their name and everything. And so there's going to be, you know, five to six people on the panel. Um, they're going to be from diverse communities uh, in an attempt to, you know, connect to the demographic a little more. But, you know, the, regardless, the messages that they spread is going to be useful for anybody in attendance. Um, so we're going to have moderators um, there. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to be real nice in that sense. And then trying to book, like she said, book musical artists and then trying to book like, uh, like you know, painting and drawing artists and just other different creators from the community to put their talent on display at yeah. the same time. I like, really want to make this a big extravaganza and like put people on, you know, and, yeah. uh, you know and give, give recognition to people and have people who know what they're talking about, you know, give their insight. Do you, yeah. do you have a date certain uh, for the uh, premiere and the, and the event you just described, Malik? Uh, May 21st is where we're looking at tentatively right now, you know, with COVID and everything. We don't know if that's going to have to shift. Yeah. Um, but right now we're, we're locked in at the 21st of May. Okay, May 21st. Um, May is uh, Mental Health Awareness Month, which correct. You know, yeah. my Perfect. Attention. Yeah. Hey, if, you, uh, if you're looking for any artists – um, to do any sort of like painting murals. I have a couple friends, one who's like specializes in like spray paint stuff. Another one who's just like a really good muralist. Yeah. Um, and then another, another painter. So if you guys are looking for any people like that, let me know. I'd be happy yeah, to, 
connect you guys. Of yeah, we're also reaching out to to uh, to businesses, local businesses in Oakland, and a little bit beyond, but mostly in Oakland. Uh, and we're trying to focus on minority-owned businesses, but really we're just looking at businesses that catch our eye, you know, and just trying to invite people out, like really make it a community thing, really make it an Oakland thing, a Bay Area thing. Yeah. Uh, bring people in. So like we're trying to get, uh, we're working with um, Hella Coastal Brewing Company. Um, oh. They're trying to get, we're trying to do a, a, a kombucha can for us. So they're going to take our art, our cover art from our comic and make oh. it into a, a can for the kombucha product coming up. So it's just like little examples of like that, how we're trying to connect the community into it as well. Oh yeah. Wow. That sounds great. Um, the comic book that that's unusual, right? To take a film and to not convert it, but to, you know, have your film out in a different form, in a written form, in the form of a comic book. I'm, I'm not sure, you know, I've, I've heard of that before, but it's really creative and cool. But what, what was the thinking behind, hey, let's let's do a comic book. Let's get our story out in for, in a form of a comic book. I mean, um, so the whole idea of the comic book is I wanted to make it accessible for kids, you know, like nice. like Bleak said, um, I mean, we had the script already read. COVID had happened. I was like, people are in the house. Why not allow them to read? <laughs> yeah. So yeah, read yeah. and, um, you know, I wanted to make it accessible for kids. Yeah. Oh, oh. And, and the comic book is out, right? I know you had some pop-up stores that were selling it. Um, yeah. It's out, right? It's it, it's available? Yes. Yes, sir. It's out. It's available on my website, uh, w, www dot nelly nail productions.com i mean folks can get it there you know follow us on instagram love conquers all underscore 2022 and um you know it's in our bio you can click on that order that straight through there and uh we'll get it to you yeah, yeah and there's a both paperback and digital version that you can get from the nelly nail productions website okay perfect we have a little ending segment that we like to do which we can do with both you guys it's called what are you eating reading preaching and plugging so even though you know this is a little different of an episode talking about a film premiere i think highlighting you guys as filmmakers you know makes it just like every other episode what you guys are doing is inspiring you embody what it what marathon minute stands for so you know we got to have our our normal ending segment you did just do a little bit of plugging but we can double plug you at the end uh the first one is what are you eating so that's like, is there a, a meal or something you're chefing up at the crib, some food item you want to highlight for the people out here? Janelle, you seem excited right now. What, what, are, you, uh, <laughs> what are you trying to, what are you trying to talk about right now? Man, shit, my allergies. So my eyes are getting water. <laughs> <Shit>. <laughs> I mean, um, right now, I mean, I've been eating pretty healthy. You know, I've been on the meal prep, you know, hitting okay. the gym a little bit. So I've been eating like, you know, having my meals already prepared, of course, meal prep. So like chicken, you know, grilled chicken with the asparagus or maybe some sprouts and some rice a little bit. You know, I've been I've been trying to eat healthy, you know, healthy drink living. a lot okay. more water, you know. All right. Let's go. Yeah. All right, what about you, Malik? St. Paul. That's what are they eating in St. Paul, Minnesota? <laughs> they eat everything. They, they try to eat healthy. They all try to eat healthy. But uh, we we are in the, we're in the quinoa over here. We're in quinoa, oh. you know, a lot of produce, like, you know, <laughs> a lot of water. You know, a lot of water. Yeah, yeah both of you guys eating way too healthy. I mean, oh. we have to. We have to. No, I mean, I'm the same. I eat healthy. He does not. I it's, do not eat healthy. It's, it's an everyday struggle. And look at like this. Look pops? at this body. Oh my god! Don't nah, you look good, pops? What Thank you. Like you. To eat? What do I like to eat? <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Uh, it's a bad message for kids or any human beings. What I eat, I I'm a burger and fry guy. I mean, I, that's sort of my go to a good coffee milkshake. I okay. should eat. I, I should eat more healthy. My kids both <laughs> eat healthy and they're smart about what they put in their body. And I can't say the same about me, frankly. That's good self-awareness, at least. But yeah. at this point, you're, you're pretty sticking to your guns. Um, OK, let's move to what are you reading? Is there anything other than I mean, I'm sure you guys are crazy busy right now. Um, but other than your script or your comic book, uh, is there any book or article you want to share with the people? Uh, Malik, you go first. Um, I'm probably going to sound like a geek or something. I'm reading the, 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 the Fall of the Ottomans. All of the Ottomans. Oh, really? History. 
Yeah, some history. Some history and, uh, buff. Oh, the Ottoman really? Empire? Yes, sir. Oh, wow. Yeah. Dope. And then um, I got uh, a book on the Crusades that I ha- actually haven't really been able to read much. Um, but those are two things I'm reading right now. Okay. The, the Ottoman yeah. Empire was like uh, the center of the world for a, a time period. Constantinople and that kind of stuff. I have oh, yeah. not heard that. Heard those words. Oh, no, t- totally. Yeah. Fifteen years. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I like that stuff. Um, okay, Janelle. What do you? What about you? Um, I just picked up the book called A Medical Apartheid. Um, and then also I just picked up a graphic novel, graphic novel about the Black Panther Party in Oakland, which is nice. dope. Okay. As yeah. a graphic novel, it's very like. What's it's it dope. called? I like. Do you it. know the name? Um, the Black Panther Party. That's what it's called, okay. and it's graphic novel. The artist, the artist. I don't. I forgot the artist's name, but it's pretty dope. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Third one. What are you? What are you preaching? So this is like uh, a words of wisdom, a message. It could very well be related to the the theme of your guys' story. Um, any any just lasting message um, or words to leave with our audience? Yeah, I'll, there's one I like uh, that I put on uh, Janelle's website when I was designing it. And if you go there now, you'll see it at the bottom. But it's oh, I think I saw it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Pessimism is the is the motivator of the optimist. Yeah. You know, so like that. if you're a op- person, you know, when people doubt you and people say you can't do it, and people start thinking negatively about things, like no, like you don't have to think that way about it. Like let's let's change the let's change the mind frame. So yeah. Yeah. I'm actually hyped you said that because I was gonna bring up that quote and be like and ask hey. what that meant. And so I'm glad <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> I forgot. But I'm, he I'm was glad about to press you, Malik. <laughs> <laughs> like, no, but I actually, I really like that quote. No, that's a good one. Janelle, you have one? Janelle, come on. You're up. It's on yeah, your. Uh... I would say, uh, I mean, what am I preaching? I'm preaching love. Like, you know, love is yeah. the most valuable asset, which I tell people, like, I mean, we need love. You know, we need love and peace at the same time. I mean, that may sound corny. To certain folks but just you know having love and just having that sense of peace is the most beautiful thing you know us as human beings and that's what we need to continue to do dope stuff and do great things and to make change you know yeah yep no i i couldn't agree more i think in the current climate of the country of the world we need a lot more love and the only thing that's going to drive these things out is is love and and not the opposite so and i would I say i would say one more thing sorry yeah and no compassion, please and compassion. and compassion compassion as well like uh yeah. you know we it's 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 crucial you know us as human beings we got to start identifying you know ourselves as as people that have you know dealt with a lot and haven't been able to process the things that we have dealt with which directs us in the actions that we display you know and uh, you know compassion you know understanding is important us being able to understand each other that's yeah. how yeah. yeah i agree, I agree. <laughs> true true okay lastly yeah. did a little bit of it but what are you guys plugging obviously love conquers all premiere may 21st yep uh, so the social media is love conquers all underscore 2022. Okay. Um, I should be on Instagram more admittedly, but yeah, love conquers all underscore 2022 is what it is. Um, the um, Janelle's website is Nelly Nell productions.com as N E L L Y N E L L productions. We lost Janelle. <laughs> yeah. We just lost Janelle Malik, but her timing's good because we were, you know, just about to say thank you. Yeah. So Nelly Nell Productions, Love Conquers All underscore. We got the premiere 2022. 2022. My apologies. Yeah, they'll be able to buy tickets to the event on the website. Um, come probably like mid to late March is when those will start opening up. Um, and then all future projects that she's going to be doing through her production company, rather I'm part of it or not. Um, you'll be able to see all that stuff on her uh, on her website. Dope. Okay. Well, I don't know if Janelle is going to join us again or not, but whether she does or not, this was 
this was a privilege for us. And you know, you. when, when Janelle sent, sent that DM, I'm really glad that I responded. I'm really glad that we hopped on that one call and it led us to having this conversation because I think what you guys are doing is incredibly valuable and important right now. Uh, it's always valuable, to, but especially right now in the current climate that we're in and mental health is such a thing that needs to be talked about. And I think what you guys are doing is inspiring and it inspires me to, you know, maybe make a project of my own and you have our support. We're going to hopefully be at the premiere um, and we're going to pump this up as much as we can. We want to amplify your story, amplify the message that you guys are sending. Um, so thank you for this time. This was, this was dope. I'm really glad we were able to do this and yeah, yeah. we're, we're hyped to see this. Yeah. Much appreciated Malik and Janelle. We don't get to talk to folks from St. Paul all that much, so it's always great, but, but on a serious note, I, I you know, as an older guy, right, Malik, uh, I'm, I am super impressed and, and, you know, Max finds these folks for our podcast, but you know, folks in their, 20s early 30s what i consider young uh just you know having an idea a passion and going for it which i i tremendously admire people who follow a passion or an idea or a goal uh and don't let inexperience get in the way um it's a really admirable thing you guys have done uh because it takes a lot of courage to do something that you haven't done before and you put in your own resources your own time and you're coming out to the community with a really good message, an important message. And all those things are really admirable. So um, a pleasure to meet you and, yeah, and Janelle, seriously. real pleasure. And we appreciate your time. You've been very generous with us. Yeah. yeah same, same here. I appreciate everything for sure. Um, and that shirt, I got to say, Max, that shirt is quite impressive. <laughs> hey, got the, I got, got the from the eyes and everything. This was, this was one of, uh, one of, I made the shirt, but then one of our, third podcast guest he put his own spin on it he put the things on it i'll have to get you guys some merch i don't know if it'll have the same patches but i'll i'll have to get you guys some merch i appreciate that all right bro I'll, we'll uh we'll talk to you soon and thank you again yeah, take was, care malik this is dope all right nice to meet you thank yeah you. likewise bye,